The universe is so well-ordered, so beautifully constructed, so grand in scope, yet so simple in its mathematical expression. It seems obvious that all of this wonderful structure must have been created by a powerful, intelligent being. It seems inescapable that a powerful mind must have created this clockwork universe, and that it did so such that other minds, our minds, could understand it. The heavens declare the glory of God. This argument for the existence of God, what you might call the argument from order, is very common and very compelling. However, this argument falls apart as soon as you ask even the most basic questions. First, let's hear the argument from order presented by some Christian apologists. And even the fact we can do this sort of science is because the universe is written in the language of mathematics. Now, maths is an abstract subject that we can work out in our head. Yet, for some bizarre reason, it happens that the entire physical universe can be mapped out and predicted using its principles. It's what the Nobel Prize winning physicist Eugene Wigner described as the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. Again, is it just a happy coincidence? How come the laws don't evolve? Why doesn't gravity change from day to day? How come you don't weigh 10 pounds more one day? The laws are constant because there's a lawgiver that is constant. That's why. The argument that you gave is similar to the argument from chaos that we develop, which is basically if we don't have some principle of explanation, then we have this problem of chaos. It's the problem of understanding why things don't just randomly pop in and out of existence all the time, right? What accounts for the sort of uniformity of our experience? And at the deepest level, I mean, we can maybe explain the uniformity by physical laws, but then that doesn't give the sort of deepest explanation because why don't those physical laws snap out of existence? So the question is, why is there order? Why is nature uniform? Using inference to the best explanation, the argument goes, there must be a God who created this order. Like many arguments for God, the argument from order is intuitively compelling, but it crumbles as soon as you consider the assumptions it's built on. For example, what other kinds of universes might exist, and what would we think about them? Is our universe actually very ordered in the first place? And would a different universe also be explainable by a God? Let's examine each of these questions. Part 1. What would a non-ordered universe look like? We seem to live in a very ordered universe, full of patterns and regularities, and the Christian apologist often demonstrates this by comparing our universe to a hypothetical alternative universe that is full of disorder. Why doesn't gravity change from day to day? How come you don't weigh 10 pounds more one day? But I think this comparison betrays an unspoken assumption. I invite you to seriously consider what would a completely disordered universe actually look like? What would you expect to see in a universe with no uniformity, no order whatsoever, only chaos? What would that look like? When apologists attempt to describe a completely chaotic universe, when they try to explain what kind of universe they would expect to see if there was no god, the universe they describe actually looks a lot like the one we live in. The only differences they propose are things like sometimes rocks fall upward, sometimes trees turn into giant paperclips, that sort of thing. A cartoon version of what is essentially still just our universe. But it seems to me that a truly chaotic universe would not simply be a universe in which rocks sometimes fall upward or where trees sometimes turn into giant paperclips. In a universe with no patterns at all, rocks wouldn't even consistently exist in order to fall upward, and trees would be impossible in the first place because the chemical reactions they rely on would only happen for a brief moment, before being replaced with a completely new set of chemical reactions, or with none at all. Space-time itself might pop into and out of existence, and be rapidly replaced with something fundamentally different every microsecond. And even this description of a chaotic universe is still vastly oversimplified. A truly chaotic universe would not even be describable in terms of rocks or trees or space-time in the first place. So, 
what are we even talking about when we describe a completely chaotic universe? It seems to me that a truly chaotic universe, with no order at all, is not a coherent idea. A truly chaotic universe might simply be metaphysically impossible, in the sense that the very concept is incoherent and unable to be parsed. I submit to you that it is, in some sense, necessary for a universe to have at least some order in order to be discussed in the first place. As a result, it seems that the question, why is there order in the universe, is actually just another way of asking, why is there something rather than nothing? Because if there is something to speak of, then there necessarily is some order, some uniformity. Something about it needs to at least consistently exist. At this point, the apologist might concede that some amount of order is necessary, but they could still argue that the amount of order we see in our universe is rather high, and that this high amount of order cries out for an explanation. Part 2. Our universe is not particularly ordered. Despite apologists' amazement at just how much order our universe has, I think the amount of order in our universe could actually be much higher, especially if the universe was the product of a supreme, perfect designer. Just as we can imagine a universe with less order than ours, we can easily imagine a universe with more order than ours, and I think this is where the problems with the argument from order become extremely apparent. We can imagine, for example, a possible universe in which quantum behaviors were deterministic rather than probabilistic, where the electrons around a nucleus could be clearly identified in location and energy, and where radioactive elements decayed at predictable intervals with clear causes. We can likewise imagine a possible universe where planets orbit in perfectly circular paths and are themselves perfectly spherical. We can imagine a universe where turbulent fluid flows can be easily modeled. We can imagine a universe where crystalline arrangements of atoms always grow uniformly, instead of the small regular domains we commonly see. It does not need to be difficult to grow a large single crystal of titanium to make a jet engine turbine blade. And yet it is. It's very hard, because our universe is not very ordered compared to what it could be, and especially not in the way you'd expect if it was intelligently designed. Indeed, just to really hammer this point home, it turns out that many of the laws of nature are actually very complex when written out in their full form. These are our best, most accurate attempts to describe reality, and as it turns out, the more accurate you try to be, the more of a mess you end up with. That is the opposite of what we would expect to see if there is an intelligent creator who wanted the universe to be intelligible. This is a Schrodinger's equation solved for the wave function of a hydrogen atom, written out explicitly in um, all of the functional forms. Usually it's written in an abbreviated form, but I've just tried to expand it out fully to show <laughs> how, how complicated it is. This is the only case where we can actually solve Schrodinger's equation for a, a, a sort of um, an atomic system or molecular system explicitly as a, a function like this. For other cases where you need to use um, iterative numerical approximations, which are exceptionally complicated and very time consuming. Elegance is, a, rel is a, a, a relative term and it's sort of subjective, but I don't see this as especially elegant. As one final way of illustrating just how disordered our universe actually is, imagine a person from the hypothetical, highly ordered universe we just described, and imagine what this person would think as they looked at our universe. A person like this could easily look at our universe and conclude that our universe is exactly what you'd expect to see if God did not exist. The uncertainty principle? Time dilation? Black hole singularities? Turbulent fluid flow? What an absolute mess of a universe. That universe is exactly what we should see if there was no God. Utter chaos, right down to the very nature of time and matter themselves. And yet, apologists in this very universe assert that this universe is actually so ordered that it must be the product of an intelligent designer. In short, the universe we live in is not particularly ordered, not only compared to what it could be, but especially not compared to what we should expect if a perfect designer had made it. Part 3. Disorder could also prove God. It also occurs to me that, if we somehow did find ourselves living in the cartoon, chaotic universe that apologists muse about, 
if that's just how things always were, I would bet my bottom dollar that these same apologists would argue that all of this disorder proves that there must be a god. Surely, they'd reason, someone must be making all of these crazy things happen. Things shouldn't spontaneously do crazy things by themselves, they have no causal powers of their own. There must be an intelligent, powerful being who makes these things happen through creative acts of libertarian free will. This is clear proof of an intelligent, supernatural mind that interacts with our world. All of this disorder proves that there is a god. In fact, we could take this version of the argument even further. We could easily argue that, if god existed, then we should expect the universe to be full of cartoonish chaos. If there is a magical, interventionist god, whose motivations are beyond our understanding, of course, then crazy random stuff should be happening all the time for no obvious reason. At any time, God could stop the sun in the sky, or turn sticks into snakes, or bring people back from the dead. Think about it this way. If Eric Hoven started his car tomorrow, and his car turned into a pile of cats, a clear case of disorder in the universe, he could say, well, God must have wanted to do this for some mysterious reason. This chaos, this disorder, makes perfect sense if God exists and freely exercised his will. As you can see, disorder proves God, order proves God, literally anything could prove God if you spin it the right way. The argument from order is completely unfalsifiable, and as a result, there is no reason to think that it's true. It will appear true no matter what we observe. Part 4. Conclusion for all these reasons, I think it's clear that the order we observe in our universe does not point to the existence of a god. It seems that any universe must have at least some order, god or no god. It's also clear that our universe is not actually very ordered, especially compared to what we'd expect from a being like the Christian god. And finally, there is the fact that a disordered universe could also be used to prove that there is a god behind it. The argument from disorder, as I've crafted it, is no less plausible than the argument from order. In short, the argument that order in the universe is proof of God is an unfalsifiable just-so story, adaptable to any situation, which proves absolutely nothing.